Denji wakes up in quite possibly the most HD animated room ever. Seriously, this anime is looking a whole lot better than my future. As he heads to work, Denji recounts how much he's made from body parts he's sold. His kidney, his right eye, and one of his nuts. Now that's taking No Nut November to a whole new level. Despite his sacrifices, he's still in debt with 38 million yen. However, Denji aims to resolve it by hunting a dead devil. Usually good for about 300,000 yen. Uh, you know, this demon's looking kinda familiar. Ah, yes, yes, she looks like your mom. <laughs> uh, no, I, so I did not do anything to your mom. Uh, you know what, I, I don't know where we're going with this. This is not, <laughs> this ain't that kind of show. Denji makes quick work of the tomato devil and gets paid a thick, juicy sum of 400,000 yen. That's like close to $3,000, man. However, after some administrative deductions, Denji only receives 70,000 yen. As he walks home, Denji calculates for how much he has to pay, leaving him with just 1,800 yen to spend for the rest of the month. I guess we could change the title to uh, Salary Man now? <laughs> Maybe uh, the chainsaw is a part-timer? <laughs> okay, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm getting- <laughs> Though not gonna lie, man, with those taxes, this show's getting way too real. Meanwhile, inside the car, the debt collector explains to his goon that Denji is simply paying off his dead father's debts. Also, Denji is a bit of an NPC and does what he's told to do, especially if he's getting paid. The goon pulls up on Denji and asks him to eat his cigarette for a thousand yen. Denji happily obliges. As the car leaves, the debt collector tells Denji to never try to run, or he'll be turned into pig slop. As they leave, Denji spits out the cigarette. So our boy knows some party tricks, huh? He assuredly tells Pochita the 100 yen will last them for another three days. I have never related to an anime protagonist this much. Inside the broken down shed, Denji realizes he'll probably be paying off debt until he dies, along with the regrets of never having a girlfriend since he obviously can't invite her into his humble abode. Yes, one of his dreams is to score a girl one day. Denji reminisces about the day his father was buried. The debt collector got so angry about Denji's father, um, leaving them hanging, I mean, well, leaving himself hanging, <laughs> before paying the month's installment. So he told Denji he's got until tomorrow to put together 700,000 yen, or else he'll be chopped into bits and sold. Suddenly, Pochita appears behind him. Denji sees the devil and surrenders to his fate. However, the little orange porcupine is badly hurt. Not wanting Pochita to follow in his father's footsteps, Denji offers his hand to the devil, as he remembers that they heal after drinking blood. Pochita angrily walks over to Denji and chomps on his forearm. Denji strikes a deal with the little guy that they'll help each other out. Later, Denji asks the debt collector to hire him as a devil hunter. Back to the present, he dreams of putting jam on bread and sharing it with Pochita. He also dreams of simping for a girl. As Pochita barks in disagreement, Denji suddenly cuffs up blood. He remembers his mother dying from a heart disease that exhibited the same symptoms. Suddenly, the debt collector knocks on the door, notifying Denji of another devil hunt. He takes Denji to an abandoned warehouse. Denji wonders where the devil is chillin', but the debt collector doesn't respond. Suddenly, the debt collector stops, so he could tell Denji that he's been a good worker. And out from the shadows, an average redditor pokes Denji and Pochita with his sword. Suddenly, the debt collector turns into the zombie devil and tells Denji that the Yakuza made a deal with the devil. I mean, haven't they done that already? But, you know, whatever. <laughs> they wanted power and the devil wanted to kill devil hunters. So, for a bit of power, the Yakuza are turned into average Redditors. Guess it wasn't enough power, otherwise they could have been Discord mods. The zombie devil hates devil hunters, so he plans on killing Denji. He orders the other Zombros to tear Denji apart and throw him in the trash. And although severely injured, Denji tries to make a run for it. Although, take note, these are not Walking Dead zombies, these are close to Left 4 Dead zombies, so... He sees the exit and immediately pulls down a metal box to block the zombies behind him. Y yeah, well, zombies were never good with obstacle courses after all, so... However, due to Denji's weakened state, a Chad zombie catches up to him and gives him a good whacking. Denji falls down and gets repeatedly stabbed, because, you know, these zombies were from the streets. He screams in agony. Denji is torn apart and is thrown into the trash. The blood from Denji's torn head drips down onto Pochita, 
healing the little guy. He reminisces about the time Denji was giving him the talk. That when Denji dies, Pochita is granted permission to take over his body and live an ordinary life. Thanks to this promise, Denji gets another chance at life. He wakes up to Pochita on his chest, proudly smiling, knowing that he's been a good boy. Denji asks Pochita if he took his body, when suddenly, the little devil speaks. He tells him that he's always loved it every time Denji talks about his dreams. So he makes a counter-proposal. In exchange for his little devil heart, Denji has to show him his dream. I don't know about you guys, but I was just getting emotional in this scene. <laughs> Suddenly, Denji wakes up and sees Pochita's tail embedded in his chest. The zombie devil notices him and orders his army to attack. However, our boy has had enough. He coldly steps out of the trash, regretting his disregard for his simple life with Pochita. As the zombie lunges at him, Denji pulls the pin on his chest. The zombies swarm him, and Zombie Devil over here is quite confident he won't be coming back from getting eaten. And so, this is where it starts. The sound of a chainsaw suddenly pierces through the loud Zombro munching. Denji emerges, slicing the pesky Zombros with his chainsaw hands. Zombie Devil couldn't believe what he was seeing. Denji launches from the ground, slicing more zombies as he takes off. He heads towards Zombie Devil and takes out his eye. Zombie Devil retaliates, hauling Denji into a metal beam. Denji doesn't see him face at all, however. As he lands, zombies begin swarming him again. This time, he shows off his superior cardio and does the most insane fruit ninja run ever. Zombie Devil is getting desperate now and takes a page from the Beast Titan's book, hurling a zombie pawns at Denji. However, Denji takes a page from the Book of Levi and slices through the army of Zombros like a coked-up member of the Scout Regiment, eventually reaching Zombie Devil and slicing him in half. After the party, Denji decides to kill all the zombified Yakuza members, so he doesn't have to pay them anymore. That's like actually what he said. By sunrise, a pink-haired girl named Makima and two mysterious dudes who look like D.B. Cooper arrive and see Denji. Makima approaches Denji and wonders about his weird smell that's neither human nor devil. As Denji falls from exhaustion, Makima catches him, slowly melting away the devil powers and turning Denji back into a human. Makima introduces herself as a devil hunter from public safety, tasked with killing the zombie devil. She tells Denji he has two options, to get whacked by her on the spot as a devil, or be kept by her as a human, assuring that he'll be fed. Man, I don't know, but both options seem quite enticing, don't you think? Yo, with the first option, can we like, get stepped on or something and like, tied? Denji asks what's for breakfast, and she tells him he can have bread with jam, salad, coffee, and dessert. Denji, of course, thinks this is perfect. Because of course it is, guy in his situation. Man, Makima's playing hardball like a fiddle. In the car, Makima tells Denji he's now under her care. She tells him she's keeping him as a dog. Denji regrets simping for her a bit now that she's revealed her true colors. She tells Denji to get breakfast and gives him her coat. Not knowing what it feels like to have an ounce of serotonin in his body, Denji returns to simping. Denji orders from an udon shop with Makima. Suddenly, he faints from exhaustion and falls on Makima's melons of mass deception. He regains composure and explains to Makima how he turned into a chainsaw man. Makima tells him that Pochita is still alive inside him. Denji rejoices knowing this, but suddenly faints from exhaustion. He wakes up on Mama's, uh, Makima's lap, but the smell of udon pops him up immediately. However, he can't eat with his hands. Or so he says. So, Makima feeds him the udon. <laughs> oh god, get a load of this guy. What? <laughs> Me? I would never stoop so low as to pretend I couldn't feed myself. <laughs> what? When I clearly could- Is Makima-chan just one spoon? Can you feed me that udon? Just, just a little bit? Can I have a taste? Later, Denji asks Makima what her type of guy is. After a bit of thinking, she tells him she likes the Denji type. Cause you see, guys with power tools for hands really get the girls. If you know what I mean. <laughs> now, but for real though, like I had the same reaction Denji has right now, but I guess anime logic just prevails sometimes, you know? Denji is smitten as Makima takes her to the Tokyo headquarters of the Devil Hunters. As she's explaining the details, Denji is still lost somewhere in Simpland, wondering if he'll ever end up with Makima in the future. Later, she gives him clothes so she can introduce him to her colleagues. Denji meets Aki, who started working three years before him. Makima tells Denji to shadow Aki. 
Of course, our boy vehemently protests to doing this. Denji acts like a brat and won't budge. So, Makima promises to work with him if he does a good job. She ties his tie, and just like that, our boy is back smitten once again. While on the job, Denji pesters Aki, asking him if Makima has a boyfriend. He takes Denji into a dark alley and beats him up. Aki tells Denji to quit because he remembers his colleagues who died by going into devil hunting without thinking. Aki assumes Denji is only after Makima. So he throws a cigarette and even spits on him, leaving Denji in the trash. However, as Aki turns his back, Denji runs up to him and punishes him for not participating in No Nut November. Denji repeatedly kicks him in the nuts without shame and tells him that the life he has right now is so much better than before. Aki retaliates, but Denji kicks him in the nuts once more, completely subduing the poor guy, hopefully without collateral damage. Later, Denji takes Aki and reports to Makima that he got attacked by the Nut Devil. Yeah, sure, we know who the Nut Devil is. Makima is just glad that the two are getting along, and puts Denji in Aki's team. She tells Aki that Denji is a special case. Well, more like a nutcase after his first impression, because he can transform into a devil. However, if he ever expressed insubordination, Denji will be whacked. Later, Aki tells Denji they're going to be living together. Denji asks if Makima is a good person. Aki tells him that Makima saved his life, so she's definitely not evil. Denji spirals into a daydream, smiles and loudly hopes he could hug Makima again. Aki couldn't believe what he heard. Soon, the two live together, and Denji becomes the world's worst roommate. The following day, the two enter a house to hunt a fiend, a devil who controls a human corpse. Aki breaks through a door and sees the fiend munching on some parrot meat. He orders Denji to transform and kill the fiend. But Denji just swings his axe at the fiend and swiftly finishes the job, stating that he doesn't want the devil to suffer any more pain. Aki presses Denji's head against a window, telling him to take his job seriously. He tells Denji that his entire family was killed by a devil right in front of him. But then, Denji tells Aki that if he could befriend the devil, he would. Aki is repulsed and releases Denji. He tells him that he'll remember what he said. As Aki leaves, Denji reveals that he only wanted to keep the, uh, academic research books which weren't splattered with blood. Denji evaluates his current life and gives it a rating of 10 out of 10. However, he feels something is missing, so he revives the dream of getting with a girl. This motivates Denji, filling him with determination to take the job seriously. Later, Makima assigns a fiend named Power to become Denji's partner. Though initially against this decision, Denji immediately shifts his opinion after seeing his partner has celestial melons. Makima reminds them that Aki's unit is experimental and will be subject to termination if no results are produced. Simply put, Denji and Power will be whacked if they don't work together. Later, Denji and Power patrol the streets on the roof. They meet two civilian devil hunters, but Denji sends them away with his public safety ID. Soon, the two get bored because there aren't any devils. Power boastingly claims it was all her doing on becoming a fiend, that she was a very powerful devil. Hence the name, I guess. Suddenly, Power smells blood. She runs toward the source, prompting Denji to chase her. They encounter the sea cucumber devil, quite a sussy looking devil in the middle of the street. Power makes quick work of it with a single whack from her blood hammer. She maniacally laughs standing in the middle of the splattered guts. Denji stares at her in awe, realizing that someone other than him is a bigger nut job. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like. It really helps the channel.